Um, so council have received grant funding to um, complete a um, complete car park area, um, complete with accessible amenities, accessible barbecues, um, uh, some picnic facilities as well as a, uh, a volleyball court as well. Um, and then we've got some sandstone steps and ramps that actually provide direct access to the Hunter River coming down about seven metres, um, as well as some natural area walking paths that will help to enhance the natural features of the site. And yeah, this area is undergoing quite a transformation. Like you said, it used to be, um, you know, looking like a bit of a jungle, but um, yeah, you've done a lot of work to get everything under control for this beach project, haven't you? Yeah, so we've been very fortunate. We've been aligned um, with some great vegetation management experts um, that have been involved in the clearing um, of some exotic weed species across this 10 hectare site. And at the moment, um, through their second round of maintenance, we're seeing massive differences between that overgrowth of exotic vegetation and Council's goal of repopulating this area with native, native species and trees. Mm. And yeah, it's not just a beach, it's also going to be a really nice um, mm. walking area. Um, yeah, how's that going to work? Uh, so we've got a dedicated natural areas officer that will uh, continually maintain this area. So the walking paths will encourage people to walk their dogs, bring their families down here, enjoy picnics, um, swim in the river, um, and enjoy enjoy the natural environment as it's meant to be. So uh, all, of, all of that will be continuously maintained throughout the life of this site. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's a bit of a new life for this area, which has been sitting idle for, for many years. How does it feel to transform it? Uh, it, it feels amazing actually. Um, when I first came down here a few years ago, um, the site is completely unrecognisable to the way that it is now. I would say that this area of the Hunter River is a real gemstone for the town and I can really see people actually taking some ownership of it when they come down here and really um, actually discovering it almost for the first time. Mm. And yeah, it'd be nice to have another swimming spot in the Upper Hunter, especially with it you know, heating up lately. Oh, absolutely. Um, the, we the weather out here can get really, really hot, but the area that we're down at the river right now um, is probably about 10 degrees cooler than any other part of Musselbrook. So I can really see that that natural swimming um, uh, uh, environment for, for people is going to be um, definitely tapped into by the whole community. And um, Hunter River Beach is just a working title for the moment. And um, yeah, are you going to be consulting with Wanneroo people about uh, yeah giving it an Aboriginal name? Uh, absolutely. So uh, the the, the uh, collective view of all the councillors at the moment is although the Hunter Beach name for the grant funding that we've received is how we need to open the project, we're in open consultation with Wanneroo right now to change that name preferably to some Indigenous language moving forward. Oh, nice. Can I jump in and ask oh, Steve, yeah. yes. as <coughs> a local, <coughs> yes. what does it mean to you? You've just mentioned you grew up as a kid traipsing around these, these yes. riverbeds. What does it mean for you to see this transformed into something you know, something accessible and usable for the whole community. Well, I'm not going to lie, there was the concerns originally. Um, Peter's team's done a fantastic job and coming down here now to see it in its full, um, nearly completed position, it's fantastic. We used to come down here and just uh, swimming, fishing, bringing the family down um, through the normal access that used to be there near the vets, but to have it actually shaped and that na natural environment, it's fantastic. I, I give full credit, as we know, water does things, and but we're putting mitigating factors so as it's not the car park etc is not on floodplain so it's up on the, to the highest peak um, you know flood water hasn't been Peter's spoken about it uh, earlier on that the flood waters have not reached the car park uh, in all the time that he's been here but he's been down here living and breathing this and it's full credit to him and his team that's why I let him speak earlier it's um, well done to him and the team because they've done a fantastic job but to be able to come down here people as I explained there's rocks along the toe of that bank over there and Peter said they've been here for 20 to 30 years that uh, soil conservation put them in there and, and they've stabilised and stayed in place so hopefully these sandstone structures um, also do the same thing and people come down here and enjoy it. There's no need to be on top of each other, there's plenty of room so um, you don't have to worry about people annoying you and bring a book down, picnic, bring the kids, um, but just be practical and please clean up after yourself really. Are you going to set up a side hustle as selling AeroGuard because I reckon you'd make <laughs> millions? Uh, AeroGuard will be be a requirement down here, yes, Darren, uh, without a doubt. But uh, yeah, look, people just have to re respect the process of what it is. It's actually a natural environment. It's not formally a beach. It's not going to be pristine and immaculately kept. We've got to keep that natural aspect to it, but there's going to be accessibility to it and a cleared path for the general. So still a bit of exploratory stuff for the kids mm. to go and do as long as the parents stay with them. But yeah, very, very much looking forward to it. So. Is it going to give uh, Nobbies and Merriweather a run for its money? Oh, I, don't, I don't know whether the tide gets that high up here, so we might, we might get some smaller swells, but I'm pretty sure that we'll see some people going down here in um, inflatables. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity here. Uh, and it's just great to have this back to the community. And, you know, it's like Peter said, it's not too far from opening. So it's going to be fantastic.
Um, Peter, how do you manage the community's expectation? You know, we talk about Hunter Beach, they're going to build up an image in their mind, but really this is natural habitat being maintained as natural habitat, and there's not an absolutely smooth path for every step you take. That's right, and, 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 that's, and that's fair to say. Um, uh, what, one of the areas that we've got on the turn of the river here at the corner is actually going to be flattened and cleared to create a glade-like area, and there is some very, very easy access points. Even though we don't, it may not be a sandy beach, the, the area that we're standing on right now is a beautiful pebbly beach. It does reflect the natural riparian environment, and people will grow to understand um, exactly what that means despite that working title. Um, there will also be some opportunities for the local school children to be involved in learning more about the ecology of the site. We've also got some plans on the island of the site to have an outdoor classroom where they can be informed by council staff and other, and other um, Wanarua people about the um, ec uh, ecological values of this area. What about access for people um, like mm. in wheelchairs and that sort of thing? Is that going to be possible? Uh, yeah, so given, given that the natural floodplain area um, is a dynamic environment and can change over time, there are some limitations in, in the amount of access that we can provide on the floodplain, but the entirety of the site has been designed with people, with, uh, people living with a disability in mind. So the accessible toilets, the accessible barbecues, the ramps, the ramps that are actually leading down to the floodplain have all been designed with that in mind. Um, and even the maintenance paths that we're creating, to a, to a limited degree, we think that there is still a level of access for people with wheelchairs to get closer to the river, and we really want to encourage that. Now, you've talked about uh, where we're standing right now, the, what's actually a working title being called Hunter Beach, but how, how long of the river is accessible through this, uh, through this new facility for people to, to uh, mm. come and use? Because last thing, I mean, when you go to the beach, you, you always want to get a spot not near anyone mm. else. So I imagine the same mentality will be here. Oh, absolutely. So uh, uh, at the entry point of the steps and ramps into the site, there is quite a large clearing area that allow a variety of people at different skill levels to enter the river directly. The beach area that we're on at the moment does have probably about uh, 40, 40 metres of accessible space here, but our natural areas team will also have additional clear paths into the river at different points. So across the 100 metres of river that we've got as frontage here, there'll be plenty of areas available for people to enjoy. So I'll just add into that as well. Uh, it's going to be locked <coughs> over night time, over an afternoon. It'll be locked. It'll only be accessible by cars through the day time and it'll be open in the morning so uh, that's just a concern that people had about uh, the antisocial behaviour we're doing enough to mitigate what we can and we're looking at CCTV footage as well, uh, cameras as well to have down here to patrol we don't want anyone coming down here illegally dumping uh, but activating it also gives it that security as well so when you say locking it off, is that just the vehicles or to oh, humans vehicles. as well? Yeah, vehicle, vehicle access. So obviously people will be able to get in if they want to. But yeah. It's not a fully fenced um, barricaded door. So uh, it's more so the vehicles coming through um, and trying to, you know, access areas that could wreck things for people down the track. But I mean, I'll flip the question on you guys. And get Darren, you've had the concerns about this uh, area and the flood zone. Everyone's brought up their concerns. Having seen it now and knowing that the items are up higher, and they're not going to be flood uh, impacted as much. Does that alleviate some of the concerns that you've had too? Yeah, look, I, th I think it, you know, when it floods, it floods, and you know, yep. people are just going to have to get used to that. It is a river after all, not a, not a pool like the Aquatic Centre, for instance. Uh, like the Aquatic Centre, they have lifeguards. Is Council going to resource anything like that, or mm. is it just use your, use your mm. common sense? It's a common sense approach, and we'd expect that kids wouldn't be coming down here that weren't able to swim, mum and dad would take care of those children, we would expect that mum and dad would be on the ready anyway, the same as when you go anywhere else outside, if you go travelling to go to a creek or a river, um, you know, ex exercise caution and, and be careful because there, again, it's a natural environment, there could be sticks or logs under there that they could trip over, so yeah, we'd expect some parenting responsibility to come in. Now, uh, you told me about a month ago you were hoping to get this done by the end of February, now it's another month, so when can people actually come here and start jumping in? Uh, well, that'll all determine on the weather and environment as well. So the boys are, and the team here have really done a fantastic job to get it where it is. As you've seen, the concrete's about to be poured on the shared footpath. So we're expecting beginning of March. Yeah, well, sort, of, sort of around the mid-March point mid -March. at the moment, we're expecting it's going to be very close to completion, but we'll be keeping the community updated. What we want to do is the product that we present to the community, we want to be accessible, we want it to be safe, and we want it to be attractive. So even though there might be another few weeks involved, I'm sure the community won't mind on that final output. And Peter, people should remember, work will be ongoing mm. here as well. You're not just going to mm. open the gates and say, right, everyone is done. 
That's right. Um, our natural areas team are, are acutely aware um, that our vegetation management team will continuously be here on site working on weeds, watering and trying to establish some of the native trees that we want to bring on this site. So the river red gum in particular has um, been decimated throughout the Hunter Valley and we're actually looking to bring back um, some of the plantations of river red gums here on site specifically for that reason. Um, so we can, well, there's still ongoing work continuously into the future. This is a dynamic environment and, and Council will be maintaining that to ensure that this remains a gemstone. It's an exciting opportunity for the youth mm. of our area, really, to get back to the river access. And people have been asking that for many years uh, of council about the access back to the river. This is it. This is a, a really secure, well-maintained area that's going to be um, for people to access. And uh, look, being a young, growing up in Muscle, look, this is what we loved. Um, hanging out down the river with our friends and, you know, mm. on the push bike. And that's what we want to encourage. More kids out doing activities, being active uh, with their mates out of, from in front of uh, electronic devices.